Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to Ask a Flower Farmer. I'm kind of coming in here at the last second. Um, it is your friend and host, Lisa Mason Ziegler. And as you can see, I am coming to you here from the farm. And i um, super excited. We got rain yesterday and today, and we've been waiting literally a couple of months for it. <laughs> so, cool flowers, um, which you can see back there behind me is so happy and when i tell you they've almost doubled in size since yesterday it's perfect weather cool temps wet um so the cool flower garden is pretty happy and the reason i have a tunnel on one of my beds is not for cold um the deer have started eating our clarkia or godisha and i mean literally they walked past all the other seedlings um because we have we plant in small increments now walked right past all these other great looking transplants and went straight for the godisha so there's your warning um it is kind of like a deer bait right so this is the wednesday before thanksgiving um and i just want to say thanks full time we're thankful for each and every one of you guys um we really kind of love what we're doing and we love that we're helping people and that you guys are um, interested in what we have to say. And um, so I hope everybody has got plans for Thanksgiving. And if you don't, that's okay too. I, sometimes I wished I didn't have plans um, for things, right? Um, so let's talk about what's going on. So besides the cool flower garden, just really um, just doing such a great job and um, we had our first in-person workshop this past weekend, y'all. First one in like five years, because I had stopped doing in-persons a couple years before the pandemic broke out. And I will tell you, it has fueled my fire. It just kind of grounds me to do that. And we had a fabulous time. Um, we did teaching all morning, and then we came here to the farm and toured and looked at stuff. Um, and then we went to the warehouse where everybody shopped like crazy people and we had a Q and a wrap up and anyway, um, so that was really, really fun. And it just kind of helps me to see what we need to be doing for the future. Right. Um, so remember if you have a question, um, this is ask a flower farmer. So if you have a question, just post your question in the comments. Okay. Because in the last few weeks, posting them the way we've always done in the little comment with the um, the bubble with the question mark in it, um, and um, doesn't work. So anyway, so while y'all post some questions in here, um, and I also want to say that we, just like everybody else in the retail world, are having an enormous. Um, Black Friday sale, which started at 12 noon today, and it's on everything that's in stock. So, friends, I'm telling you, um, head on over there. That includes, that's everything we have in stock, with the exception, not books, nor courses or gift certificates. It tells you there, but I think that's what it is. Um, and let me show you this. So... We are actually birthing some more sweet peas here on the farm. And this is the Swift Blocker, Soil Blocker, the Mini 27, which Bobo came in yesterday. She was planting the last Thursday, came, came in and was planting the very last of the transplants that we had ready. Um, and she came in and said, we're not growing sweet peas any other way than this that this is just the perfect size block for planting um, and just such healthy transplants. So do you see all those babies being born? We're literally birthing sweet peas. So, and the other thing before I start looking for questions is, you know that my book went on pre-order yesterday morning. Uh, oh my goodness, y'all, y'all just blew us, actually Monday morning. We Y'all just blew us away and how many people are pre-ordering and we're just so grateful for each and every one of them. Um, and you know that I can't wait for you to have this book. Um, you know, I'll get a copy, I think probably like late December maybe or something that I'll be able to share with you guys, but it's hardback and it's beautiful and the photos are just amazing. And so that's the real excitement. So if you have not pre-ordered my book, when you purchase your book through the Gardener's Workshop, you get, Pre-orders get 
the Cool Flower Zone Guide. Um, which is only available while the pre-orders last. You know, we have limited number of copies that were promised or guaranteed to get. Um, and um, so for the pre-orders, we are, you would get that, that resource. Every, everybody that buys the book from us will get the flowers that didn't make the book. There were some that I just could not fit in. And um, so we have extra resources. And plus, I would love to sign a book for you. I sign them all. And um, so that's really, really exciting. So let's look back here and see if we have any questions. You know, you can ask questions about seed starting, cool flowers, flower farming, whatever you got posted. And I'll say, maybe I don't know, or maybe I'll know what you're, you're doing here. So let's see here. We had a lovely extended fall and it did not take full advantage of it here in Southern Ohio, wow. Please come to Georgia and Alabama. So, Paige, yeah, I don't do much traveling anymore. Um, and I will tell you that we had people from Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, of course, Maryland, Indiana, and Ohio. I mean, we were just blown away. Um, so, it was really, really great. Does this sound right? Planting a commercial flower bed, three troughs, I've, if direct seeding... Three troughs if direct seeding, four if transplanting. Yes, that is correct. That's in general what I do. There's one or two that maybe come to mind that don't get four, um, like hairy balls and triloba, but other than that, yes. Is it too late to plant larkspur seed? Well, that depends on where you are. Um, and so really, friends, it really is about your frost dates and do you still have warm weather? Seeds have to have some warmth to be able to sprout, to break dormancy and sprout. If you're already cold and staying cold, then that larkspur seed is not gonna sprout this fall. You can plant it, but it's gonna sit there all winter. And what isn't gonna sit there all winter are the weed seeds. They're gonna sprout and overtake your larkspur. Um, so it's really about you need to have some days in the high 60s for a couple of weeks for those seeds to actually um, be to be able to sprout and to get started, right? What flowers should we plant for bee farming business? Um, so any flat, most flowers um, are beneficial to bees, but I'm not a bee keeper or a bee person. I know that we have lots of native bees on our farm, but that is not um, honey, that's not honey bees. Um, and so I can't help you with that. I do know that they really love cover crop, buckwheat and crimson clover. I pre-ordered your new book, so looking forward to it. Oh, thank you so much. We appreciate every single order. And um, because based on pre-orders for us and for other big booksellers, that's what tells the publisher how many books to get printed the first time around. Um, so it's very interesting business, y'all. Um, anyway, so um, we just appreciate each and every person. And then you'll get your digital resources when you purchase the book from us. What are top sellers um, pages asking? If you're talking about for cut flowers, um, it just really depends on what season we're in. Um, you know, I often speak of that, you know, sunflowers, obviously, lisianthus, coxcomb, celosia plumes, zinnias, um, lisianthus, did I already say that, um, snapdragons. There's, you know, it's those common flowers that you see used in the industry a lot that, um, that, are just so much better quality locally grown. But frankly, um, I sold everything that I grew. Do you know what I mean? It's like it was once I found, once I was a pro, behaved like a pro in the beginning and then became a professional, meaning the way that I treated my customers and the process they went through, they would buy anything I had because they trusted me. They knew and trusted me. Um, so really, if it held up as a cut flower, it was a good seller for us in general. I notice your soul blocking recipe doesn't include blood meal for nitrogen, but some other recipes do include. Do seedlings not need nitrogen until planted out in the garden? So, see, first off, seeds don't need nitrogen in, 
to, to sprout. You know, that in fact, that can kind of interrupt that, right? Um, and then after we move our seedlings off of the seedling heat mat, once they germinate, we move them to the grow lights, then they get weekly liquid um, seaweed fish fertilizer once a week. So that's how they get their nitrogen. Do you sign your books? I do sign all of our books. Um, in fact, every when I'm in the um, Fulfillment Center every Tuesday, um, they come up in my office and say, we got stacks of books for you to sign. And that's usually the last job of the day that I do is to stand and just sign books. And I really appreciate I mean, I love signing books, um, and I learned, I'll tell you a little rabbit hole story. Um, years ago, when Suzanne and I were still traveling, just doing conferences all over, I spoke to the Herb Society of America in New York City. I actually spoke at um, in Central Park. There's a building there of which I forget the name of it. I should know. It's right next to where the otters are because I could see the otters swimming in their pool through a big window as I was talking. It was all I could do, y'all to keep my A game on. Anyway, um, there was, and her name just, Linda, her name just left my mind, y'all. It's been a long time. Um, the New York, uh, one of the members was a New York Times garden writer for 10 years. Um, she was retired at this point, um, and she wrote a book. She wrote the book, The City Garden. Maybe that's what it is. Um, gosh, her name now, it's going to bother me. I don't remember her last name. Y'all, I'm so old. I forget. I've forgotten so much already. Anyway, she pulled me aside. I didn't have any book deals at that time and said, I want to help you get a book deal. You need to write a book. And anyway, she helped me in that process, but she also told me how to sign books. And in her world and in her mind, she thought that you shouldn't just sign your name that you should actually have some phrases that you actually sign with and that that was just the right thing to do. And she said, take three, Linda Yang, there's her name, <laughs> um, Y-A-N-G. Anyway, um, her book, by the way, we went to a bookstore in New York City. Her book was 20 years old and was still in bookstores everywhere. Um, and it was the City Garden, I think, because she lived in a high rise in Manhattan, right? Um, anyway, I love signing books because I still do what Linda showed me to do and she has since passed away. Um, but yeah, I love, um, really signing books. So thank you, Paige, for asking. The Swift Blockers are a dream in my future. Well, let me tell you, friends, they're on sale too this weekend while the supplies last. All of our tools. I mean, this is like, forget buying Christmas presents. This is the time to get your stuff. Um, and so Swift Blockers, the stand-up hoe, the razor hoe, the garden hoe, all of, I mean, seeds, supplies, all your stuff. Um, if it's time to, I saw, I see Wanda's on here, our friend, our Alaskan peony grower, and she'll tell you it's all tax deductible if you're running a business, if you're truly a business. Um, so yeah, get your, get your blockers. So Wanda says, we're home from our vacation. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone from Fox Hollow, um, Hollow Peonies. Um, so yeah, Wanda and her man have been traveling in the south during the deeps, um, getting back home before um, the winter really starts up there, which I guess it's our, they're already probably knee deep in snow. Do you know Hayes Jackson or grow the plants he creates? No, I do not. I don't know of him. Um, and we only grow cut flowers, you know, proven cut flowers, known cut flowers, commercial cut flowers. Um, so I don't, I'm not in the general gardening world. And once you start growing cut flowers, you quickly learn there are a million other things you could grow, but they aren't necessarily good cut flowers. So sorry, I don't. How many feet of sweet peas would you recommend? I plant to keep my sanity. I'm afraid I'm going overboard with my sweet peas. So that's a really great question. Sweet peas for us um, during high production were not much of a crop for us. And the big picture of crops, first off, they have they take up a lot of space. They have, a, have to have a single row down the center of a bed that would normally have four rows of something else. Plus, you have to trellis them, which is work. Then you have to untrellis them. But um, so during our high production years, they were not, they didn't command enough money. It didn't really matter how much we charged for them. They were just a lot of labor and took up a lot of space, and it just wasn't worth it for us. Um, but when we backed down 
about seven years ago to where we were just selling to a couple of floors. You know, in our heyday, we were selling 23 full florists, two supermarket chains, um, a bouquet sub subscription drop-off, our members-only market, um, and we were banging up some flowers, right? Um, so during those years, we didn't do it, but when we backed down um, by choice and went to two florists, high-volume florists, um, gave up supermarkets and just did our members-only market, we brought sweet peas back. And I found, because we learned to start grow, to start cutting actual vines with multiple blooms on them to be able to use them really easily in bouquets, and even without blooms, the trendles and the foliage is awesome in bouquets, that that was the way we used it. When I was just cutting the individual stems of flowers, you know, 15 feet was more than enough for us because you had to keep them cut. You have to cut them every single day to keep them producing. But once we started cutting vines, we needed more. So it just depends on what you're going to do. But 20 feet of sunflowers, of, of sweet peas, is a lot of sweet peas, y'all. Um, because that's the thing. Literally, we had to cut sweet peas every day. The minute they start developing their little pea pods, which are poisonous, by the way, um, then they stop producing flowers. They slow down and stop. So have less is more with sweet peas, right? Ideas on what flowers I can plant now in zone 9A in South Texas. So um, if you ordered, pre-ordered my book, the Cut Flower Handbook, we said the zone, the zone, the cool flower zone guide um, has by zone and it has some tips. And so I will tell you that where you are um, doesn't have a really deep long winter. So you want to plant cool flowers, pretty much any of them, as you are about four to five weeks away from the coolest part of your winter. Um, and so that's what I would be looking at. Um, I'm in zone 7A and read mixed answers on planting ranunculus now with frost cloth. I don't have tunnels. Also, is it too late to start cool season planting today? Thank you. All right, so first off, I don't grow ranunculus. I've never grown, um, I never, because I'm in the city and I do not have hoop and greenhouses, ranunculus and anemones can be grown outdoors in the field, but they need low tunnels with protection, meaning putting plastic on them, which I've never done. Um, Y'all, so how do I explain it? It's like I learned that I could make more money with less work by growing other things. Ranunculus are gorgeous. Ranunculus will sell. Ranunculus need protection from rain. Ranunculus costs money for each corn, right? Um, so I just chose in my circumstance, because I'm a field grower, to not, I did actually grow an enemies of ranunculus one year. One year, I put one low tunnel in with plastic on it, and it about killed me. I mean, I was just not in tune to doing that. I also don't like training puppies. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I am not that, cons I'm always looking for the quickest and the easiest way to do things. Puppies and ranunculus don't do well with that. Um, so I cannot answer your ranunculus. Ranunculus are amazing. I've just never grown them. And in fact, I ended up just making a lot of money growing annuals, which were lower investment, high return. Um, and so I am not the person to ask ranunculus questions to. I'm sorry to say, you know, Stephen Gretel's course, um, which is now available also, the, all the Flower Farm and School series online schools are available to purchase anytime now. Their course, they grow so much ranunculus, anemones, and lisianthus, and so much um, that they would be your people to actually ask that question to. Also, is it too late to start cool season planting today? So again, it's not, uh, being in set zone seven only tells you what you can plant in the fall. It does not tell you when to plant in the fall. It is your frost dates that actually dictate that. So um, you can um, actually, you know, six to eight weeks before your first expected historic frost date it is the optimal fall planting time. Yes, you can push the envelope, primarily not on direct sowing, but on transplants because you can get your beds ready 
and then you can start your seeds, and then when you plant your transplants, you can hoop and cover them, um, and that'll get them to be established. To get seeds to germinate out in the garden this late in the season where the days are cool to cold and the nights are cold, the seeds will just never sprout, and I just don't even recommend trying it if that's your conditions now because they won't sprout, and it's very discouraging, and you think it doesn't work. Um, and I say to people, people that are just learning about cool flowers, um, first off, the second planting window is in very early spring, which is six to eight weeks before your last spring frost. So think about when, and this is historic information, y'all. Um, historic dates, frost dates are based on 30 year averages. This is nothing you're gonna look up and figure out. You just put it into the search engine, you know, my frost dates and here's my zip code. Um, and it comes up with the date. You just go with it. I know the weather's changing y'all, but you have to have a date to start with, right? So find out your last spring frost and six to eight weeks before that date is your next cool flower planting window. However, we don't direct seed then because for us, we're in deep winter still at that point in time. You can plant transplants out, but a seed is not going to sprout outside in those conditions. So you get another opportunity. Um, my book, Cool Flowers, goes into that, and I cannot wait for y'all to have the new book, the Cut Flower Handbook that's coming in February that you can pre-order now because part of a first section is about figuring out when you plant everything, cool season and warm season annuals, find in your sweet spot. I've given you a place to write it in the book so that you don't have to ask that question anymore. You're going to know. And then all you have to do is when you learn about a new flower, try not to step off this porch, y'all. Um, when you learn about a new flower, all you have to learn, is it a cool season or a warm season annual? Because you're already going to know when you plant those two different families in your garden. It is going to be so amazing for folks to actually do that. So um, it really depends on where you are on the frost dates. I have penny crests that self-seeded from last year. Plants are up this fall. Will they survive Georgia without a low tunnel coverage? Yes, and what a great statement. So we at Crests um, is probably two years ago is when I learned about fall, about that that was a cool season hardy annual. Um, and don't we learn more from our own gardens? You know, that's how I learned about early bird sunflowers, too, where I saw some sunflowers that receded years ago and thought, huh, they did that on their own. Why can't I plant sunflowers earlier? So I think in 8A, which I am 8A now, so we're on the same um, zone anyway, um, and we did cover it last year for fall planting, but then the very early spring planting, I didn't. So I think it's right on the edge. You'll have to, if you're going to do a deep dive on a polar blast or something, I'd probably cover them. Um, but I don't know whether I'm going to cover mine or not. We might do an experiment. Um, and it just really depends on the weather. But I think you're actually going to be fine. We're having a weeding at our farm in June of 20, a wedding, I'm pretty sure you mean. In June of 2024, my granddaughter is requesting wildflowers on the other side of the pond. I'm not sure what is the best way to seed start first or seed in the ground. Well, that's not, I think it's easier to cultivate and do what we're doing than to plant a wildflower field. Um, that is a, you ought to just actually, um, Put that in a search engine, planting a wildflower garden. First off, wildflowers are pretty tiny flowers in general. It's when they're all the same, like all cosmos, people consider them wildflowers. What people call wildflowers are not really wildflowers. It's what they've seen planted as wildflowers, right? Um, but there's a great book by my friend Miriam Goldberg called, um, I think it's, taming wildflowers. She's been a wildflower grower. She's in Canada for like 50 years, um, and she's got a lot of wisdom to share, but I'm thinking that your granddaughter wants a pretty view over there. Um, you might be better off to plant a field of sunflowers or something that'll be a little more showy. I don't know, but whatever you plant, I mean, planting rows of zinnias might be your best bet because You'll have a wider window of bloom. That's part of the problem, right? Um, so, yeah, I would definitely, and June is early. Um, 
So you might want to, you should have planted probably cool flower seeds maybe out there. Um, but yeah, I would get on a search engine and look that up. But I don't have really any experience. I planted cool season, I'm sorry, cover crop. But I have never and will never plant with a date in mind of like, I have to have a flower on XYZ date. So this is when I plant it. I know that Jenny Love goes into that deep in her farmer florist course with us because she does crop planting for weddings. Um, we've just never done that. We planted on our schedule and then sold whatever came during the weeks they bloomed, right? And so I can't help you with that, but I would get on a search engine. Are there awards for fresh cut flower glow growers? Um, the Cut Flower Association... Um, is um gives out awards occasional awards at their big conferences for people that have done lifelong accomplishments um so yeah the ascfg all right so i'm looking i was in zone 8a and now i'm in zone 8b i was in zone 7b and now i'm officially zone 8a on the borders of zone 9A now, will the new growing zone areas affect my cool season annuals like bachelor buttons, poppies, and perennials? So what we have to remember, y'all, is the weather part is not changed. It's just what we're calling it. So you've already been growing in those conditions. Um, all the change in the USDA zone means is that potentially if you bumped south like this person and I did, that means you might have more things to plant in the fall. Although being an eight... Um, means that we can pretty much plant everything if we wanted to in the fall. So that just means for somebody that went from 6B to 7A now has a whole lot more options to plant. Um, so the, the chart should not affect anything. Um, you know, if nothing else, you'll more things will survive winter in your um, actual location. Let's see. Puppies and ranunculus. I'm a breeder. Yeah, don't even get me started. This year I went from zone 5B to 6A. More possibilities. Exactly, Connie. Exactly. I mean, that's all. The, so that zone, USDA zone map has doesn't do anything to what you're doing. I mean, most growers have been dealing with this for a long time already. They've just now officially changed the names to kind of like catch up with the Joneses, right? All right, friends, so let's wrap it up. Remember the gardenersworkshop.com. We have a big Black Friday weekend. Our sale has already started on our regular stock products. The exception to that is courses, books, and gift certificates. And there might be something else in there that I have forgotten. But all of our seeds, tools, and supplies. I mean, friends, we're talking row covers, hoops, soil blockers, swift blockers, seeds, fertilizer, um, all my favorite tools, the shears, the hand hoe. And it, it, the sale is on in our app and on our website. So there you go, friends. Um, you know, have a great, just time to get your peas in a row. Because here's the thing that where we see people really missing the boat, particularly if you're a flower farmer, um, is we only stop seed starting during December. Not because we can't start seeds, but because I take December off from farming anyway. The second that Christmas is over and we hit January 1st, we hit the ground running starting seeds again. You know, the eucalyptuses and the slow growers and then we have all of the, the cool flowers that need to be very early spring planted. You got to have all that stuff on hand. You just don't even know how many phone calls and emails we get in early January, in February. Actually, the first two to three weeks of January that says, oh my gosh, is there any way that you can speed up my shipment? Because that's like the busiest time of the year, right? I, I need to start my XYZ. Well, friends, now is the time to order your XYZs. <laughs> So, and why not do it when you got 20% off? We just love extending um, the Black Friday weekend from now until, when does it go through? Sunday. And then, of course, there's Cyber Monday. But again, all of our sales are based on in-stock products. So that means if something goes out of stock, then no longer available, right? 
All right, friends, I'm going to wrap it up. Remember, my book's on pre-order, Black Friday sale. There's no show this Friday. We're going to do it on Cyber Monday. So join us inside the app on Monday at 12 noon Eastern time. Um, and we will be having some fun, too. I'm pretty sure. We'll be doing Christmas up. Um, so, friends, until we meet again, ciao.